Okay, folks, um, I'm not going to go into a lot of, we're going to talk about offshore trolling. And what I'm going to concentrate on now is some of the techniques and tackle. We're going to assume that you have done your pre-trip planning. And by offshore trolling, let me clarify, we're talking about anything from 10 miles literally all the way to the break. Now, once you get out to the break, some techniques and a few things will in fact change, but a lot of those things that you do in the break, you can actually bring in to the closer in area, let's say in the 15 to 30 mile nautical mile range and utilize those tactics because what happens during the summer months here is as the Gulf Stream is going by, eddies spin off of the Gulf Stream. And with those eddies spinning off, they bring in the very blue, high salinity, very desirable, clear water and create edges and pockets of nice blue water. And with those eddies, the pelagic fish will in fact come in with that eddy because they're going to be seeking the bait fish when that eddy hits the inshore water further in and creates a fence. They're going to, there'll be bait fish stack up there and they will feed. They will not stay in our 25 mile range. They will be moving, migrating north, typically during the summer months, coming back to the south in the fall, but they will, they could go back out to the Gulf Stream. And these fish swim, I mean, 25, 30 miles a day is nothing uh, because they're constantly on the move. They do not find a rock and just sit there and stay there. And what I'm talking about is mahi. Everybody in our area loves to target near well, what I call near shore mahi. And it's probably one of the most popular seminars I have. And I do. Uh, and I include it with my offshore trolling because typically in our area, when we go offshore in the summer, June, July, August, we put out a trolling spread and you can catch a variety of very good fish. Obviously the most plentiful fish we have is king mackerel. Uh, king mackerel fishery here is excellent. We have a very good nearshore mahi fishery. We catch a lot of nearshore sailfish. Uh, we have, I've caught many, many sailfish with inside of land, within 10 miles of the beach, okay? Um, and then occasionally we get wahoo that will come in on those eddies, come in off of the break and come in in the 25, 30 mile range. Um, every once in a while you'll be out there king mackerel fishing or mahi fishing and you'll get one of the striped speedos on and it's always a real treat and a real plus, but it does happen and it happens quite a bit. And it typically happens when the eddies come in, uh, tuna, blackfin tuna, big eye tuna. Um, I've caught them all within, in, well inside of 30 miles, between 20 and 30 nautical miles out. And because they've come in on those eddies. So when we talk about offshore trolling, this can be from a relatively small boat to a bigger boat but we're gonna to try to concentrate in that 15 to 35 mile nautical mile range that the typical angler is going to go to versus the 55 nautical miles all the way out to the break. But that is doable on a pretty day, okay? So when you're out there, you've zeroed in, you found some good water temperature shots, you've done all of your homework prior to leaving the dock. You've got your bait, you've got everything accumulated and you're heading out and you've got a plan. You've got a plan, you're going to this area, you're gonna put out your lines, you're gonna troll, and you're gonna seek where those fish are today. That's the key, where are the fish today? But you're gonna see, and one great way to find them is by what I call fast trolling. And fast trolling is not high speed trolling, that's totally different. That's done for Wahoo predominantly out in the Gulf Stream. But high speed, what I call fast trolling, is trolling anywhere from five to seven and a half knots, okay? And um, you would pull a variety of lures and rigs, but the key is to get lines deep. You have to fish the water column. If you're pulling four lines or five lines and every one of them is a ballyhoo rig, 
skipping on top. Typical rig with a nice pin rig ballyhoo on there. You are missing probably 75-80% of the fish. And you're missing not only king mackerel, but sailfish, mahi, tuna, and a variety of fish. These fish do swim deeper and they are looking for the bait schools. Because a lot of times as you're going over a hard bottom area, you'll notice a big cloud of bait 20, 30 feet up off of the bottom, coming up from the bottom and clouding up. If the bait's down there, the pelagics are gonna go down to feed. Then what they'll do is they'll drive the bait up to the surface and then they'll feed around it on top. So um, you gotta run lines deep. So now we come down, well, how do we accomplish this? One simple way is you can run a variety of deep diving plugs, okay? Big lip deep diving plugs, okay? These will dig down. Uh, this size here runs about 25 feet deep um, and you have to let it back quite a ways. Uh, most of these are in that same size range. I, did, I didn't bring any real big ones with me. These are mostly 25 foot deep running lures, okay? But you let them back 80, 90, 100, 120 feet behind the boat and uh, let them do their thing and they'll dive down, staggering. Let one back real long, one back shorter. So one's running 15, 20 feet. But ideally you'd like to get something a little deeper than that. And one of the go-to things here is a planer. And this is one thing that uh, you do. And this is, happens to be a number two. And you can run a number two or a number three. This is a number three, a little bigger as you can see. And, um, but you wanna make sure, and these will run on a TLD 25. And typically my rule of thumb is, on a number two planer, I want at least 40 pound line. And on a number three planer, I want at least 50 pound line. And the reason is the amount of drag you have to put on there when you're trolling, let's say six, six and a half knots, to keep uh, the line from pulling out. But this is the tried and true go-to North Carolina charter boat setup is a planer rod. Um, and what we do is behind these, you will run a 50 to 60 foot leader, okay? And uh, typically it's gonna be 100 pound mono. If, it's, uh, if the fish are a little finicky and the water's real clear, I'll go down to 80 pound mono. And again, I'll have, you know, 60, 45 to 60 feet of this back there. And our go-to rig is a, this is very simple folks, a double hook rig, and that's a Mustad 3407 hook that you put together. And what you do is you take the one hook going this way and the other hook going that way. And you take a pair of pliers and you just literally push that down through and you end up like this. So they're both the same way. You don't want them opposite, the same way. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see it, but the barb of this hook has not been damaged at all. They'll, it'll slip right through there. There's a little groove in this hook. This hook does have a split eye and it, some, it, that's where you'll slide it right down through and you'll get your double hook rig. And what you do is you attach your 80 pound mono to that. And the go-to lure is a blue water candy sea witch right here. Pink, pink and chartreuse, pink, chartreuse, and blue. Those three colors. If you have those three colors, you cannot go wrong. I can tell you right now. Those three colors right there. And the go-to bait is a false albacore belly strip. And I do not use rubber belly strips, but a false albacore belly strip. 
and you'll take it and you'll measure after you cut it out of the belly and you want it about an eighth of an inch to a quarter inch thick after you get done cutting it and you measure where the bend of that back hook is and you insert it first and then you put your front hook in and I can tell you that is a dynamite trolling rig and then put let's do, do a pink and chartreuse pink and chartreuse see which on top of it it'll blouse down pull that through the water hook it on to a number two planer run it back so it's entering the water 80 90 where your line will enter the water 80 90 feet behind the boat and what ends up is that that number two planer will be down 40 50 feet deep back behind the boat this is a fish killer right here you you cannot beat it now if you don't have any false albacore belly strips that you've made and salted and frozen you can go and there's a product out now called squid strips and they're about this long and they're squid wings and they're cut about this wide half inch wide and they're typically about 12 inches long this i like about a seven inch belly strip for these hooks these by the way are number seven again must add 3407 hooks that i've put together because i like about three three and a half inches tailing behind the back hook okay but you can take those squid strips out of the box, thaw them out, lay them out. They're not quite this wide, but they're a little bit narrower. And you can taper the fronts and then come down and make a tapered tail in the back. Save the rest of that squid strip because they typically are about 12 inches long. Save it for bottom fishing. Put it in a separate bag after you cut it off and make your, your strip. Save it for bottom fishing, okay? They work very good. I've used them in many, many cases when I've run out of false albacore belly strips, okay? Um, but that is a go-to rig right here. You, you, I've caught sailfish, I've caught wahoo, tuna, you name it, on this rig on a number two or a number three planer rod, okay? And that's a very good way to get deep. You don't want to do this Obviously, another good one is your drone spoon. This happens to be a three and a half. This is a great color combination. Chartreuse and pink, we call it watermelon. And um, that's a great combination for all the pelagics that I mentioned. Another real, you can go down one more size. This is a two and a half and white and silver also. So pink and chartreuse, white and silver, pink and silver, and blue and silver would probably be my four go-to drone spoon, drone spoon colors. Again, 60 foot leader back behind your number two planer, either 80 or 100 pound test mono, okay? And make sure on your planer you have ball bearing swivels because especially with the drone spoon, they spin really, really violent, okay? Um, they do a lot of action and they'll twist up your leader really bad. So you want to do that. Um, obviously another great, well, we're going to stay on getting deep. One other method to get deep. And if you do not have one on your boat, the best thing you can invest your money in, not in another rod and reel, not in more tournament tackle, is a downrigger. A downrigger to fish the water column is critical, absolutely critical. And so um, you need to go be able to get down. And at high speed, slow trolling, you will pull a cannonball on this for slow trolling live or dead bait. But for fast trolling, you'll pull a bigger planer. This happens to be a number 12 planer here. And this is a great way to get a bait deep. And when you let this back, what happens is you will set this back in the water, this planer off your downrigger. And let's say I'm gonna let it back 90 feet, which would make this planer down 45 feet because it's down at about a 45 degree angle. So it's gonna be basically running half the distance you let back deep. 
If you want to get a little deeper, run 100 feet, you'll be down 50. And this planer's down there just pulling along. What you're going to do is you're going to take, and this is the, the joy of this, you can take a very, very light outfit. You could use the TLD 25, be great for that, but you can even go lighter. You can go down, this is, happens to be one of my Spanish mackerel rods. You can take and hook on to this. And one thing I like to run down there is the belly strip rig. This one happens to be with a pink lure on it in front. Again, belly strip. But this leader versus 40 feet is only about six feet long. And I'll hook it onto the swivel and I'll take a number 32 rubber band and I'll let that lure back about 60 feet behind the boat with the belly strip back there. I'll wrap the rubber band around my line, go through it, make a single loop and hook it onto a double swivel. Then slide the double swivel down that downrigger line and what I do is I pull if I've let out a hundred feet I pull out 30 pulls like this so I'm letting it down that way I've got it down near the end of that planer and you'll see what I did on this planer is that I add a 400 pound test three feet leader with another swivel on it. And what that does is as my line is sliding down, it will hit this and stop. And I don't run the risk, if I had this where I was hooked onto my downrigger, I would run the risk of my line coming down here and laying across the back of this planer. And I could get abrasion, I could fray my line, cut it off, those kind of things. So I stop it way up here so my line never has any chance of getting anywhere close to that plane. And then I set the drag, tighten it down so I'm not pulling any line. When a fish hits it, he pulls, he snaps a rubber band, and you've got your fish hooked up on a very lightweight outfit. And then you just crank your planer up on your down or get it up out of the way. And when you fight the fish in, the dilemma with your planer and your long leader is I'm here and my fish is 50, 60 feet behind the boat. So I've got to carefully hand line that fish in. And if you're hand lining, you know, a 30 pound king, a 20 pound mahi, a, a tuna, a wahoo, it, you know, can get a little testy. So uh, with this system, there's no long leader. I've got six, seven feet of leader. I just reel it up, fighting it as if I'd caught it on a top rod. Comes up, I gaff it, throw it in the box. I don't have to hand line anything. Uh, hand lining is something you just want to be careful about. We do it all the time out here, and I, you know, second nature to me. But don't be afraid of it, but just be really careful and never bring the leader. When you're hand lining in that 60 foot of leader, never bring it in the boat dump it back in the water because your boat, when you hook a fish, you keep your boat moving. You never stop, do not come, at least at slow trolling speed. One, two, you know, two miles an hour, three miles an hour. You want it in gear, you want the boat moving forward. And that way the leader will trail right straight behind the boat. And as you hand line that fish in, you just drop the leader right back in the water, okay? Another safety factor on that, once we get up to the planer, either I have the angler, when I reach and grab that leader, I tell them to hold the rod and reel out to the side of the boat like this and act like they're still fighting the fish, okay? Do not bring it up like this, do not hold it like this, but hold it like you're still fighting the fish. The reason is if that fish takes off and I have to let go of that leader, I don't want this lethal weapon to come flying and hit me in the head, okay? So you hold it way out to the side. I'm in here, hand lining, 
And that way, if I let go, the planer is going to be four or five feet away from me. The other option is when you get to the planer, put the rod in a 30 degree rod holder on the side of your boat in the gunnel. So now the planer is out here. You, you have the leader. So if you have to let go, the planer is going to be way away from you. Those are your two options. Okay. And they both work. Okay. Um, it just depends on how you personally want to do it. Um, if you're a little short-handed, putting it in the rod holder is a great, great way to do it. Okay. Um, but it's so key to get baits deep. Um, one other way, if you want to run a long line and get a bait deep is you can add a trolling sinker anywhere from three, four, five, six, eight ounces in front of it. But again, you need a long leader. Ideally, you want 30 to 50 feet of leader behind that trolling sinker because you do not want your bait right up behind this five, six feet behind this weight. You want it further back, okay? So that's um, a factor when you're setting up your rig. So we've got some bait steep. The rest of the spread, you have to think about your boat when you're trolling out here. Your boat is a gigantic teaser. If you go under the water and I come over you with my boat, my boat looks like a bait school. If you go underneath the bait school and look up, it looks like this dark cloud and it's creating a little bit of turbulence. Well, I'm creating a lot of turbulence with the boat, but it looks like a big bait pond. So then what you think is the predators are going to attack the wink, weakest link in the bait pond. So we've got a big pot of bait that's very strong moving. What we're going to do is create weight, some weak links behind it. So as you put your trolling spread out behind the boat and you want to seek the clear water out, and every boat is different. It'll, some twin outboards have very narrow clear water alleys between the outboards and the gunnel. Single outboard has a not much wider one, and you'll be able to visibly see them. You want to position your baits in those clear water alleys so they're visible. You don't want them in the white foam. But any kind of little turbulence, any kind of little teaser, this little mole craft bird, very effective. It looks like a little flying fish skipping on top, and you would take and put your pin rig ballyhoo behind that. And so all of a sudden I've got a bait here that can't quite keep up, and I've got another smaller predator or another bait even six, seven feet behind it that's behind that. So they're gonna be attracted to that bait. Another great one is just your daisy chain. Just a very simple squid, little hoochie squid daisy chain. Four or five little squids in a row sliding through the water and then you got a weak link behind it. This happens to be a little blue and white four inch cedar plug. Great nearshore trolling bait, artificial, works like a charm. A really good one, is the Blue Water Candy Flippy Flop. This is a mini flippy flop, okay? And you pull a bait behind that, and again, it looks like uh, it's another little bit bigger bait school and some baits that cannot keep up. In this one, I happen to have a mole craft bird behind the flippy flop about 16 inches, and then I have my little flying fish, uh, artificial lure doesn't require any bait. This is a no nonsense. The key to these flippy flops, I'm gonna share a secret with you, is line angle. You want it up about two to three inches out of the water. So it goes down and flops on top, comes up, creates a commotion. If you put it down flat in the water, it's gonna dive and do this, and it doesn't look real good. These flippy flops, you want them up on top of the water, skipping, and going and skipping, coming even out of the water two, three inches, then go back and splash on top, go down, splash on top. That's how you run a teaser, okay? So line angle is very important, and you want this to look very tempting. When you stand there and look at it, you wanna say, boy, I would attack that. Another one off of your downrigger, the ever-present downrigger, is you can run a dredge off of it, 
30, 40 feet behind the boat. A beautiful strip tease dredge. You have never seen anything prettier on the water. Six, seven feet under the water. That's a really nice 36 inch strip tease dredge. They, I mean, it looks like a, a bait pod. So now we got our big bait pod here and we got a bait pod 40 feet back that can't keep up. So then right behind that, we position a lure skipping on top. Uh, a naked valley who was a great one back there, skipping on top right behind that bait pod. On the other side, you could put a spreader bar, 36 inch spreader bar with 16 squids on it, splashing around, it makes a great commotion. Again, position your baits just right behind it, six, seven, eight feet, and you're ready to go. So um, you, that's really what you wanna do is you wanna utilize your teaser, which is your boat, and you wanna create segments that break off with weaker bait fish that can't keep up with the main group, okay? So number one is we wanna get deep. You have to get baits deep. And again, there's a variety of ways. Um, I personally, the number two, number three rod pointer with the 60 foot leader is my go-to rig in this 15 to 35 mile range. Cause that way I know I at least have two baits deep. And sometimes I'll even run a diving plug in shorter off of one corner and forego either a dredge or a spreader bar in order to get another bait deep. But running a nice, you know, seven, eight, nine inch diving deep diver in close is like money in the bank. And then run my assortment of top lines, be it pin rig ballyhoo, be it baitless lures, those kind of things out there to create that commotion on top, okay? So offshore trolling, great method. Do your homework, plan your trip. Plan, plan, plan. Have a real plan based on conditions, current conditions, up-to-date conditions. Find your structure, maps unique chart, the way to go, get it. Find your structure, coordinate the structure with the temperature, that you want and seek and where it is and go out and put out your spread. Cover area, trolling at five to seven knots. I talk in knots, folks. Uh, miles per hour, take 1.2 times that. So it'd be 8.4 to six, six to 8.4 miles per hour. And the other one is a lot of information here I covered in a short period of time. There's a lot more. Offshore trolling is a very complex sport to do it do it right and be successful. I have lots of notes about this and other things from trip planning to everything else. So please email me or text me. Give me your email address. I will gladly just, uh, this is my offshore trolling. I have probably 120 pages of notes here that I would gladly share with you just about offshore trolling. And it will include our near shore mahi, which is our summertime fishery that's very popular and um, a, a lot of other fishing, okay? So plan your trip and then get your baits deep. That's critical. You have to run baits deep one way or another. And don't think that 10 or 15 feet is deep. Get baits down 25, 30, 40, 50 feet deep because I'm talking, we're trolling in anywhere from 75 to 110 feet of water. So you want something down at least half of the water column and possibly even a little deeper than that. So good fishing to you, have fun, be safe, and uh, reach out and I'll get you some notes. Thank you.